some quick unit objectives before we keep going. So last lesson we looked at um, how to determine the order or the dimension or the size of a matrix, as well as how to name elements within a matrix. Um, we learned how to add and subtract as well as multiply both by a scalar or a number um, and by another matrix. Um, we learned how to recognize lots of different kinds of matrices, including the identity matrix, which is what we're going to be uh, working with today, um, as well as learning how to calculate the determinant and multiplicative inverse of two by two matrices only. Um, we're going to learn how to determine whether a matrix is regular or singular, um, solve simple matrix equations, and then next lesson we are going to um, learn how to solve simultaneous equations using matrices. Okay, so some quick recap questions for you. Just pause the video, give these a go, um, and then have a look at the answers. Okay, for the first one, two matrices can be added when they have the exact same order, they're the exact same size, so we can add corresponding elements. Um, two matrices can be multiplied when um, those middle numbers were the same. So the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second one. And the third one, sh these should be fairly straightforward. Um, verify on the CAS if you're not sure. Something to note here in question 3B is that that second matrix is the identity matrix. Um, and what you'll notice when you multiply them out is that multiplying by the identity matrix doesn't do anything. Um, you just get the matrix that you started with. And that's why it's called the multiplicative identity. So here's your definition for an identity matrix again. Um, it's a square matrix with ones on the leading diagonal and zeros elsewhere. For example, your one by one identity matrix, a two by two, a three by three, and an n by n identity matrix. Um, and as we saw on the last slide, when a matrix is multiplied by the identity matrix, it doesn't change. Um, so we have here that A multiplied by the identity is the same as the identity multiplied by A, um, which, by the way, is not usually the case. Um, matrix multiplication is not always uh, commutative, so you can't always say that A, you know, AB equals BA. Um, but in this case, it is equal because they're both equal to just A. Okay, let's talk about inverses and then we'll do a quick example. So if we were trying to solve this for x, this is just a regular equation, um, what we would do here is we would divide both sides by 2. Really nice and simple. Um, and the reason we divide both sides by 2 is because x has been multiplied by 2 um, to get 2x, um, and we need to undo that. We need to do the inverse operation, and that's division. But when we look at a matrix equation here, we've got some matrix A multiplied by our unknown matrix X, um, and that's equal to B. We can't divide by A on both sides because division is just not defined for matrices. We can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, but we can't divide. So what we need to do is to find some other kind of inverse, a different kind of multiplicative inverse that is not division. This is our multiplicative inverse. We just write A inverse, um, and, and the way we define it is that A inverse times A is equal to the identity. And this is how we calculate it. So if you've got some sort of 2 by 2 matrix, um, this only works for 2 by 2 matrices, and they're the only ones we're working with by hand, um, we get the inverse by doing all of this stuff to it. Okay, so here are the steps. You need to grab your matrix, and you need to swap the elements on the leading diagonal. That means A and D, they get swapped. We then grab B and C, the other ones we haven't touched, and we multiply those ones by negative 1. So they become negative B and negative C. And then what we do with that whole matrix is we multiply that by 1 over something called the determinant, um, which is just equal to AD minus BC. Now, just a quick note, if the determinant is 0, then you're, what you're trying to do is 1 divided by 0 um, to multiply that by the new matrix, and we can't do that. Um, so... What we say is that the, the original matrix A is singular, the determinant is zero, and inverse doesn't exist. If the determinant is not zero, then it's, the matrix is regular and an inverse does exist. Okay, let's have a look at an example of calculating inverses. Um, so we've got a couple of matrices to find. We've got A and B, um, and we want to calculate the determinant first and then calculate the inverse. So remember that your determinant is given by AD minus BC, where A and D are on your leading diagonal. So what we've got here is A times D, 4 times 3 is 12, 
take away BC, 5 times 2, 10, and we get 2. So now what we want to do is we want to calculate the inverse. So A inverse again is given by 1 on your determinant of A multiplied by AD swapped, B and C become negative. Um, so what we've got here is 1 on 2 times, swap your A and your D, you get 3 and 4, um, and then make these ones negative, or change the sign of those ones. If we just simplify this, we'll end up with uh, a half times 3 gives us 3 on 2, a half times negative 5 is negative 5 on 2, um, a half times negative 2 is negative 1, and a half times 4 is 2. I'm just going to verify that this is correct. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get A inverse, multiply that by A, and I'm hopefully going to get the identity matrix at the end. Um, so I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to work with the form without all the fractions. Okay, So I'm going to use this with the half out the front. Um, this is the inverse, a half times this. I'm going to multiply that by A. Um, and the reason I'm not using the form with all of the fractions is because fractions are can be annoying to multiply. Um, so I'm just going to leave that scalar out the front for the moment, and then I'll multiply it in. Um, so remember with matrix multiplication, we're doing row by column. So to grab that first uh, element, I want the first row by the first column. So that's 3 times 4 is 12. Um, plus negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Uh, first row, second column is first row by the second column, so 3 times 5, 15, plus negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Okay, second row, first column, so second row, first column, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, 4 times 2 plus 8. Last element here is second row first, uh, second row second column, sorry, so second row times the second column, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, and 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, don't forget that half there, I'm just going to move this up so it's more visible. Um, just clean up what's inside the matrix, so neg uh, 12 plus negative 10 is 2, we've got 0 here, 0 there, and 2 here. Now when I multiply it out, um, I get 1, 0, 0, 1, which is I. So we've verified that we've done the inverse correctly because when I multiplied the inverse by the original matrix, I got the identity matrix. Now that we have our inverse, um, we can go ahead and start solving some equations. So if we've got this equation here where AX equals B, what we want to do is get rid of our A by multiplying um, both sides by our inverse. And this is called pre-multiplying because we're multiplying the front of the equation, the left of the equation. Um, A inverse times A we already decided was our, in, our identity matrix, sorry. Um, and our identity matrix times any matrix is just going to be X. Okay. So if we want to solve for X, all we have to do is grab our inverse. Um, that's that up there. Again, I'm going to use the form without all the fractions inside the matrix, just to make it a bit easier to multiply. And then we're going to multiply that by B. Okay, so again I'm just going to leave that half out the front and just start to multiply. So again that first element is first row first column, so uh, first row times first column, 3 times 2 is 6 uh, minus 20. First row, second column for this one here, 3 times 0 is 0, negative 5 times negative 2 is 10. Um, first row, third column over here, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, negative 5 times 6 is take 30. Um, and then we go on to the second row, so we're grabbing this row now, second row, first column, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 4 times 4 is 16. Um, this one here, second row, second column, negative 2 times 0 is 0, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then over here, second row, third column, negative 2, negative 4 is 8, 4 times 6, 24. Okay, let's just simplify. Oops. Sorry. Okay, 
for this second row, it is second row, first column, negative 2 times negative 2, 4, negative 4, sorry, um, 4 times 4 is 16, second row, second column, negative 2 and 0 is 0, 4 times negative 2, negative 8, um, last one, second row, third column, negative 2 times negative 4, 8, 4 times 6, 24. This up so we can see. Um, let's clean this up inside. Uh, so 6 take 20 is negative 14. We've got 10. Negative 12 take 30 is negative 42. Um, negative 4 plus 16, 12. Negative 8 and 32. Now all we need to do is bring that fraction into the brackets um, or into the matrix. And when we multiply that half in, we get negative 7, 5, negative 21, 6, negative 4, and 16. Okay, so let's just verify all of this on the CAS. Um, what we want to do is just to find some matrices so we can work with them. The first one I need is A. The second one is B. We have 2, 0, negative 4. Uh, 4, negative 2, and 6, and we'll just store that as B. And we'll just quickly check um, that A and B are right. Um, so let's just go through and, and calculate our determinant, our inverse. Um, so what we want is to go to action matrix, calculation, and debt there, determinant. We want the determinant of A, and just verify that that's 2, which is what we got. Um, and also we want A inverse, so just A inverse, and that gives us what we calculated by hand as well.